Interviewing excellence is more than just being prepared for your interview. It's being well prepared. You need to know when an interview starts and when it ends. You need to know the common questions asked, how to answer them confidently, and also you need to know what to do when you make a mistake during an interview, and most of us will make mistakes. Join me in today's show, Career Growth Made Easy, Episode 174, Interview Tips to Get You the Job. I'm Craig Ansell, your host. I was an engineer and in 2008 lost my job due to the economic collapse. Jobs were scarce. I didn't know where to turn to get help updating my resume. Online services and coaches charge hundreds, even thousands of dollars. I took matters into my own hands and learned how to craft interview winning resumes. Shortly later, I landed a job with a Fortune 500 company. I have helped many achieve similar success. Now I share my tips to create interview winning resumes, interviewing excellence, and high performance growth strategies on my podcast, Career Growth Made Easy. Welcome back to another episode of the Career Growth Made Easy podcast. I'm thankful you're here. My name is Craig Ansell, and I'll be your host. Today, we're rolling into episode 174, Interview Tips to Get You the Job. When I started with the intro, I talked about something called interviewing excellence, and it was more than just being prepared for your interview. It, in fact, is being well-prepared. Such things that might interest you. You need to know when the interview starts and when it's officially over. You need to know the common questions that are asked, how to answer them confidently, of course. But you also need to know what to do when you make a mistake during an interview. And chances are, many of us will make mistakes during an interview. The question is, what will we do when we do it? How will we act? What will our body posture be like? And what will we say to recover from that mistake? Will they catch the fact I made a mistake? Maybe they asked me the same question twice in a different way. And my first question, rather my first answer, I just made a mistake there. My first answer was different than my second or vice versa. We got to be careful with those things. So there might be ways to recover from that. And finally, is it on your mind? What are you going to wear to that interview? Is it always the same answer to dress nicely? Hmm, maybe, but the answer is it depends. Let me tell you a brief story. I was speaking to a hiring manager recently who had interviewed three candidates, and he mentioned two of them were memorable. He said it was a position for professional office job. There was a night and day difference, he goes on to tell me, between two of them during the interview. The first candidate used more is less. I say that jokingly because if you've listened for quite some time, you know we preach and teach the opposite here at Craig Ansell and Career Growth Made Easy. We preach less is more. The second candidate was well-spoken, concise, and he was a stark contrast to the first. That was just some food for thought, but less is more really can be your friend, both in the written word and spoken word. Here, we've helped hundreds of job seekers prepare for interviews, both using one-on-one -on -one sessions as well as group. Two of my most memorable events were from the first, a one-on-one -on -one private session with one of my students. And she said to me, after we were done coaching that time, she said, I don't think I'm going to need to use your mistake recovery process. I said, hey, no problem. I just want to go through it with you, kind of do a mock trial one to make sure you're aware of it. It might sound a little bit funny here doing it one-on-one, -on -one, but I want you prepared for the interview. I found out later that after she had received the opportunity for three separate business interviews, three separate company interviews, during one of the interviews, she actually did fumble up her words. She was excited and she had to use the mistake recovery process in that interview, and she told me it worked really well. They thanked her for correcting her words, and it helped her have a sense of confidence. 
so that she didn't have to hold that in the back of her mind. Crap, I made a mistake. What do I do about that? And am I good? Is it going to come up later? Am I going to have to find a way to modify my answers in the future? So mistake recovery is important. You see, the reason why I named today's show what I did was the fact that I am an interview coach. I am a resume coach. And interviewing tips to get the job is exactly what we're talking about. One of my four courses that I teach, coaching courses, is actually called Interviewing Excellence. And that's where I sit down with you, typically one-on-one, but I have done it in group sessions, and go through the entire interviewing process from beginning to end how to respond, how to be proactive, what to do when certain difficult situations come up, and then help you prepare for some of those difficult questions out there. And some of those most common questions can really stump us if we're not prepared. So it's really important to go through at least a few mock or trial runs with yourself. Back though to today's show content. With regards to learning about interviews, I will talk about some of those things I mentioned today in more detail. And you know, you deserve the right to be prepared. When you're prepared, it cuts down on your anxiety. It cuts down on nervousness, perhaps even stress or tension that might be in the air. And when that's all said and done, it can help you answer more confidently during an interview. I don't know about you, but that sure sounds great to me. When I first started out doing this stuff, I was sitting there in the driver's seat. I thought I was prepared. I was excited when I got my first opportunity to interview, but a couple of them really didn't go too well. I found out I could have prepared a lot better. And there's nothing wrong with thinking that way. You might feel that way right now, regardless if this is your first job you're going after or you're having a job transition and moving into a different role. You could say, I've just got out of education, I've just got out of my high school, I've just got out of my college, I am ready to go, I am prepared. Hey, don't get me wrong, there is nothing wrong with self-confidence being strong. I recommend it, I believe in it. The challenge comes when we're not prepared for that question that pops up. Do we understand that our body language speaks levels above and beyond our spoken word? Do we understand that our tone in our voice impacts how interviews happen and how they react and respond to you? Do we know how to read the room, reading each interviewee's, rather interviewer's, body language, seeing how they communicate with each other? These are the things that can be concerning when you go into an interview. No, I'm not trying to scare you. No, I'm not trying to give you pause when it comes to interviews. I'm sure you've gone through some on your own. Some have gone well. Maybe others could have gone better. But when you have the opportunity to listen to this show, also to consider interview excellence coaching, I would take me up on that. I would. Why? Because I have the experience working with hundreds of people, both for Um, service jobs, hospitality jobs, but also professional and office jobs. But the thing is, it's not what I believe in or what I am sharing that makes it special. It's the fact that what I know comes from both interviewers and interviewees. It comes from real world examples of what companies Hiring managers, human resource professionals have told me in face-to-face interviews, in group interviews, they've told me what companies are looking for. They've told me what bothers them, upsets them in interviews, what they look for, and what they're disappointed with when it comes to interviewing techniques or interviewing styles. There are those that are prepared, very well prepared, in fact, and those that seemed that they just showed up because there was a job opening and didn't know the first thing about their company or the position. Call it ill-prepared. You have to decide which you'll be. Furthermore, I've had these same discussions with both people applying for jobs, building their resumes, job seekers, and hiring companies that review these resumes. And believe it or not, there is a stark difference when you're prepared because it can make a major difference from your resume going to the discard pile to the potential interview pile. So being prepared both for resumes, sending in job applications, but also interviewing. Now, 
We talked briefly about the opportunity to have mistake recovery because most of us will get excited, maybe nervous, and there will be different levels of anxiety or stress for us <clears throat> for each and every interview that we go through. But importance of interviewing uh, excellence is that you are prepared if a mistake should occur. The other thing I want to mention to you, I also shared during my coaching sessions on some proven negotiation techniques to help you get more money during your job offer. Think about it. You prepare. You build up a really strong resume. You get that phone call or that email, that notification that you have opportunity for a job offer. Things are so excited. You can't wait. You're a little bit nervous because you're not sure what's going to happen in the interview, and that's kind of normal. Then you go into the interview. Things are going pretty well, you think. Then it comes time towards the closure of the interview, and they surprise you and make you a job offer because things went so well. Most of the time, we're so excited. That was the whole goal of this process, right? I don't want to go through any more interviews. I don't want to have to send in any more job applications. I wanted to work here. Now they're offering me a job. We typically smile, look them in the eye, shake their hand, and accept. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you knew that you had opportunities to negotiate your salary range, what they offered you, that might be the chance to take them up on it and attempt that negotiation. It sure beats the fact that you accept the job, you go home, you're excited, you can't wait for your start date, you start working along on the job or the position, and then you get your first paycheck and you're disappointed. You wished your paycheck was a little bit higher. You realized the job was a little bit more difficult than you thought. The time to negotiate, the time to potentially get a higher pay offer has already passed. What company, if you are a hiring manager or think about it as a company owner or human resource professional responsible for that candidate that was just hired, what company is going to say, well, Craig, you know, how's your first week been? Well, you know, it's been really good here. I did underestimate the amount of work here and how difficult the job was. I think I'm capable. And then I would respond back with, you know, hey, that's great. Thanks. I'm, I'm glad to hear it. And I think we'll get you on board quickly. Just give you some time to ramp up. Um, would there be an opportunity to review my pay because I think I should be paid more for this difficult job? That just doesn't sound right. So that's why we have to take these interviews very seriously. At one point or another, whether it's your first interview and they potentially make you a job offer, or you have some follow-up job interviews, whether it's in person, virtually, remote, computer-based interviews, there's all kinds nowadays. You have to be prepared for when that potential job offer comes. And there are ways to handle that and navigate that. And I would be honored to be able to work with you to help you with some of those techniques to improve your opportunities to potentially receive higher pay. I'd mentioned there were a couple couple situations over my time with interview excellence coaching that really sparked some memories for me. One of the other memorable moments that I had was working with a group of students at a local college, and their response was overwhelmingly positive when I told them the following statement. And I said, it's okay to say, I don't know, during an interview. All I said was, it's okay to say, I don't know, during an interview. And it's like they felt I gave them permission to say that simple phrase. They were so excited and so thankful. Many of them were shocked and did a lot of follow-up with me on that. Of course, I recommend limiting the use of that statement. But here's the thing. When you don't know the answer, it's best to tell the truth. It's best not to sabotage yourself and the interview, the opportunity for a follow-up interview or the job offer by trying to fluff your way through something. The interviewing staff is there for a reason. They're typically going to be subject matter experts or SMEs in their particular subject or topic or job area, and they're going to be able to see through anyone that tries to do a snow job or falsify anything. When we typically do that, we also get really wordy. It's human nature to get a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of stress, and our emotions ramp up. And that's not something you want to do. So if you simply don't know the answer to something, you can say, I don't know. During my coaching, I'll talk about mistake recovery and also how to strengthen your position when you don't know the answer to questions or you get stumped. It helps to be prepared for these situations in advance because not only does it give you a way out of the difficult situation, it helps for 
forward or progress the conversation. With that said, you'll actually build up your confidence and be more prepared. You'll look more confident in the interview, not only with your spoken word, but with your body language. And we really haven't touched on body language, but body language is a large portion of how we communicate. It's our posture. Do we lean back? Do we lean forward? Do we show that we are engaged with our body language? Do we make eye contact? There's so many things to discuss that we can't cover them all here, but I just wanted to give you some of the key tips that I've seen and some of the feedback I've heard recently from interviewing managers on some of the things that they found important to them and some areas that, well, were difficult for them to choose those candidates because of the fact that they kind of went astray or awry with the interview. This has been Craig Ansell, and I am your host with the Career Growth Made Easy podcast. We are closing episode 174, interviewing tips to get you the job. If you found some of the content in today's show helpful, please stop by social media, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, at Craig Ansell. That's at C-R-A-I-G-A-N-C-E-L, and leave us feedback. We're looking to get to 100 plus reviews on Apple Podcasts, and we'd appreciate your help getting there. Thank you again for listening. I will talk to you next week. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to our channel. New episodes every Monday. In the meantime, why don't you follow us on social media, at Craig Ansell on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. To book a coaching appointment, download our free guides, or join our email list, check out the links in the description below.